Good morning and thank you for joining us. You're watching Plus TV Africa. Off the press is what it is. I have with me a guest to take a look at the newspaper headlines this morning to make sense of it. Uh, he's uh, a reputation manager. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right. Uh, we have the punch. We have uh, this day. Uh, we also have the nation. Um, we are vanguard and a bit of sports. Uh, we'll get around to sports eventually. The Punch newspaper has the presidential election tribunal as a screamer, a tiku to challenge 11 states' results. INIC, ad hoc workers say server was used. Okay, and then we have a picture depicting a scene of an accident in India. Police arrest sibling for kidnapping 88-year-old father. Custom officer faces medical test for promoting self to CG. Lagos seizes truckload of toxic poma, that's uh, a local delicacy, the skin of cows. Deal with subsidy, alien refineries, as parts tell new NNPC boss. Core member who washed hair with sniper dies 10 days to birthday. That's a sad one. Whoever said you could go wash your hair with sniper i mean the kind of things you you watch and read and hear is just amazing may her soul rest in peace uh presidential panel demands that 684 billion naira oil block renewal fee from mobile and then you also have restructuring send l refi panel reports to national assembly of shoba advisors apc um we also have uh, insecurity celebrities Protest at redemption camp. Sink, seek Adebayo, Adeboye's intervention. I'll take that again. Insecurity. Celebrities protest at redemption camp. Seek Adeboye's intervention. All right. On the back page of the Punch newspaper, we have something on Forex. Nigerian banks complicit in racketeering. And the embattled senator... Uh, picture is on the back page as well. Uh, he was arraigned uh, before Zuba Magistrate Court. Uh, he's currently on bail, as we all know, five million uh, naira bail. Uh, Tubasu, please. Um, which of these headlines caught your attention? I think I will go um, with the presidential election tribunal news first. Um, and I think that it's very important to uh, look at the. It seems. Article is going to cut with a bit of um, a case that is not watertight. The INEC ad hoc staff keep saying that the server was used. In the first place, do people really understand how some of these things work? Um, so I have a bit of an idea. I mean, I'm, I'm a tech enthusiast. So um, when you use your application, everything that makes the application work is sitting on a repository, so to speak, which you call a server. What INEC is saying is that the fact that you used, for you to be able to use that card reader, it's connected to a server because it's fetching information from a repository to confirm. So when they tap your card that has a microchip in it, an NFC, it reads the data in that card, sends it to the server for confirmation. Does that mean that when you transmit results, the result on the server is what is used? No, because there were places where during the election, they did not use the card reader. They used, there was a control sheet during the election. So yeah, but, but the, what the, their argument is, there must be, uh, the mo I don't know much about it, but it seems there must be a record of the number of times information was extracted from what, that server. That's what I'm saying, that yes. this, the, serve, the, the, um, the tech part of the election was mm -hmm. not used in its entirety. So because there was a control, so there were people that, I mean, where I voted, the person who voted before me, the card did not read, if I remember correctly, the card reader did not read his card. So what they would do is to look at the control sheet, look at your card, is, the, is it the same face, is, is it the same name and all of that, tick it off and record. That person's vote is not going to be recorded on the server because the card reader did not read his card. So the only thing you can use is that control sheet. So from what INEC is saying, they're saying that most of, we use the recorded result and not what was transmitted to the server, not what was, well, not what um, is showing on your card. But reader. to the layman, when INEX says they don't have, they did not use any server, they basically are saying that none of that came that's, to that, play. That, that is where I question INEX communication. 
Why are you saying that there was no server? The card readers cannot work without a server. They must be connected to a repository where they are fetching the information from. So, but you can say that, oh, the server was not where we were reading results from because we have many areas where, you know, the card readers didn't work properly. So, it was important for us to use, you know, I mean, the control sheets where it is easier for me to say, oh, you are here and pass a message to you than try to call you over the phone. If I try to call you over the phone, despite the fact that you're sitting right beside me, there's probably going to be like a bit one or 1.5 second delay in the conversation because it has to go through. Again, a server, maybe WhatsApp server or any of the telco server, and come back to me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I think, I don't know why I next said there was no server. And I, I mean, I'm trying to remember the, you know, sometimes headlines can be a bit mis misleading. Yes, maybe in the through. in the explanation of, or maybe the INEC um, staff or INEC was quoted out of context. They would definitely, the, the card readers cannot work without a server. So there was a server. The question is, the results that were read, were they the ones that were printed off the server? I almost, from the situation of things from that election, I, you almost can tell that no. Because if you've gone to that polling unit and the polling, um, your name is there, but the card reader did not read your card, your record of voting is most likely not in the server at that point in time. They can go back and now update and reconcile and say, oh, we have, you know, these are the people that the card readers work for. This person, the card reader didn't work for it, but we'll manually update it to show that the person voted. That's a different maybe, case. Maybe, maybe that was But done. there was no enough know. time to do that. We know that we waited for the result. We stayed up all night and all of that, waiting for them to read the result. So, I mean, it's almost a non-issue, and I feel like, there should, are there other things that we should be arguing about? I, I don't know. It, it just feels like a weak um, approach. Maybe because I'm also uh, maybe because of yeah, my little knowledge of, of tech. It just feels yeah. like a very weak argument to keep hammering that the server was used. For well, it would be a good idea, I urge you watching, to please go read the full story so you can have a better understanding and make a little more sense of um, uh, the position of Atiku in the presidential uh, election petition tribunal, and of course that of the presidency. The latest is the bio data for the presidency yeah. uh, that was captured in the news uh, earlier today, but it's not in the papers uh, this morning. Mm. We'll move on now to this day newspaper to see what's here. Mele Kiari, I'm not sure if I'm getting that name correctly because it's like not been in the spotlight uh, this much until now. That He's the uh, yes. NNPC new boss. Uh, he said, NNPC will raise bar on transparency. That's an assurance. Uh, it has to write on your screen there. Uh, promises to fix nation's refineries by 2023. Hmm. Okay, Oshibanjo, ethnic religious suspicion, Nigeria's greatest problem. That's our vice president speaking. If you want to know what premise is talking now, go check page six of the paper. Um, we have election results transmitted to server. INEC ad hoc offices tell tribunal. Atiku PDP call witnesses, tender more documents. Uh, still the big story this morning. There you have it on your screen. And of course, the smiling governor is there, Governor Godwin, uh, Godwin um, Obaseki, and Ifan Yokoa of Delta State. Of course, you also have uh, Aminu Tambua of Sokoto State during Okoa's 60th birthday reception. Uh, very happy birthday to the governor. All right, we have Mustafa, my reappointment as SGF, a uh, humbling experience. <laughs> On the back page of this day newspaper, you have this piece, uh, uh, Tuesdays with Ruben Abate. And today he's talking about Oshu, Supreme Court, and the violent senator. Uh, there's a picture of the acting CJN. Uh, how does that relate? You might want to go read it. I also have um, the assaulting um, not Sorry. too young to slap. That's one of what's one of our <laughs> guests described the whole uh, fiasco. Said he's not he's too not young, young to slap. To slap yeah. Elisha Abba, a broken symbol. Uh, you might want to read the thoughts of the writer on the back page of this day newspaper. Uh, there are a few headlines here. Let's take a look at this uh, new GMD. Um, I mean, congratulations to the uh, new GMD. Um, the oil and gas sector is, um, you know, it's a very critical sector to Nigeria and I'm just a bit um, you know puzzled about fixing of the refineries by 2023 and you know I was reading the body of work uh, of news um, before I came on here and I think that I would bother more on the fact that he's talking about removal of subsidy and making the refineries work uh, a little 
pinch inside me makes me feel like some of these conversations about the refinery is a kite. Um, yes, I think that they are going to sell off those refineries. Um, in the last about two weeks, the vice president has, has talked about the need to sell off the refineries. A new GMD is talking about fixing the nation's refineries, being very audacious about removal of subsidy. Um, the only strong confidence I have in that is the fact that the Dangote refinery, if it should come upstream and start producing, because he also added that we are going to export. So if that refinery should come up, and that refinery is big enough to, I think, fulfill our local demand of, um, of for supply. Um, so I, I, I'm seeing a situation where it seems like uh, what is behind this conversation is more of selling off those refineries to someone who can handle it, and then the belief that when the Dangote refinery comes upstream, we're going to be, we're not going well, to have to import. What I'm worried about is that, we are not acting like we understand the impact of what removal of subsidy is going to do to us as a people. Um, the inflation effects, the, um, how it will impact on everything and anything, just because we have a very weak transport infrastructure and we don't have a very good mass transit infrastructure. Majority of us fill our cars to drive where we usually don't even need to drive to, where we could have used the train, where we could have used the mass transit bus, and then we will have a shared cost and all of that. I think we're not talking about that. So um, I think that being, I mean, stopping the importation of oil is kind of in sight already. And if you stop the importation of oil, we most likely will be closer to, if not automatically, you know, we'll be closer to fixing the issue of subsidy. The impact is what I think that nobody is talking about yet because the impact will come. The Dangote is, uh, refinery is not charity. It's going to want to sell at globally competitive price. So what is going to happen when that happens? I, I, I was going to take you up on the miscommunication part of it because mm -hmm. it seemed to be a real occurring decimal. On one hand, the vice president is saying something different. On the other hand, the NNPC GM, new GMD is saying something different. And then we have the case of this Ruga controversy where at some point the VP's uh, um, personal assistant or aide, media aide, came out to uh, give a different statement and then needed to come back again and clarify the position of uh, the vice president. Do you think that maybe they still haven't gotten it, even with all the media aides and special assistants and advisors that they have, they still haven't gotten it right with communicating properly without creating unnecessary conflict for the people. I'm sorry to sound this way. Vast majority of the time, the people who hold the position of speaking on behalf of government officials in Nigeria are not qualified to do that. They seem to forget that the job, that job is sometimes more strategic than operational. Most of the time, the way to get that job is to either be a favorite or to be a journalist or, and with all due respect to journalists, you know, I think that we all have our place in the society. I'll use the Ruga issue because, you know, it's, I don't know if I said it here or somewhere else. It was one of my predictions when I heard about Ruga that Ruga is going to fail. It's not going to be accepted, not because it's a completely bad policy, but there's something we're forgetting. And allow me to you know, quickly explain that. We're in the 21st century where every smartphone owner is a publisher. Is a publisher. Now, so when, you, when government puts out a policy, the onus is on government to properly market, keyword marketing in its, marketing in its form, not sales and publicity, marketing, market that policy to stakeholders, every stakeholder, every critical stakeholder. So when you take Ruga, for example, Ruga has its benefits, you know, and like someone said on, 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 on your program even here, there are health risk, we are losing money because of how we rear cattle in Nigeria. You move them a lot, they are not healthy, they're supposed to be kept. Have you seen some of the cattle from UK? Do you understand? So the benefits are there. Has the purpose of Ruga been well communicated? No. When in marketing, when you do a lot of stakeholder engagement and um, consultation, you understand the pain points and 
you know, the nuances of people who are critical to the implementation of an idea. Basically, you're saying that the, the, the media aid to some of our public officials needs to be reschooled? Yes, because that is policy marketing. You came out and implemented the policy that was controversial without going all out to market. I'll give a, a, a quick example to close out on that. The Obamacare, it was not a perfect policy. But as strong-headed and as very vocal as Trump and his supporters are, they couldn't throw out the Obamacare, which is the Affordable Care Act. It's not a perfect bill. Why? Because it was a properly marketed policy. They did. It was, you would think that the Obamacare was, um, was a product. They marketed it so everybody could understand. And the way human beings are structured, we're always looking at what is in it for, for me. me. The moment people can get what is in it for me. So let me give you an example. If someone told you that Ruga, for example, was going to make our cows more healthy to consume, so the meat you are taking is going to be more healthy, would you, would, would you not become more emotionally connected to it? Second, and I'll close out on it, do you know that abateurs in Nigeria are very, very controlled. Do you know you can't just wake up somewhere and start killing cows there? Sure. Government, sure. why? So why can't we do that? Because is the the air risk that comes with everybody opening abateurs everywhere is we 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 we're kind of closer to it because we've become a bit schooled about it. Why didn't anybody school us about Ruga? The Ruga issue is definitely. Um, is a it? I'm not saying it's a perfect policy. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Right. It's a big. Uh, issue and if we start going down that line, we might not get done. So uh, I mean, to, to just go to so yeah. to take us back to the news, I think that every time government comes out to talk about issues that borders on policy, there has to be clear cut communication. Are we going to sell to the, the refinery? Should we sell it? What are the benefits and the pros of selling it? And it has to be done. If it's not done, then um, the GMG of NNPC is going to say that it will fix the refinery at the back of his mind, thinking that oh, we have two options, either use government money or sell it off. And then, you know, we will know where it stands. So All right. Uh, we have to go to the Nation newspaper now and take a look at some of the headlines here. Oba of Lagos, Oba Sanjor is problem with Nigeria. I hope my eyes are not disturbing me as it did the other day. Oba of Lagos, that's it on your screen. Oba Sanjo is problem with Nigeria. Governors Tinubu, King Jibe, others call for national unity at Ashoba's 80th birthday. Uh, there's a picture of the celebrant on the front page. Uh, just finished that, we have the uh, Abo pleads not guilty to assault charge. I'm wondering why he's pleading not guilty when he had already come up to say he apologizes to the woman and uh, some other issues. Uh, Elumelu, others, PDP Kakas warns leaders. That's another one. Um, the NMPC boss story is recaptured here, but we've treated that quite extensively. Atiko's witnesses insist on server. That's also taken care of. We have DPR short 17 gas outlets in Ibado. Rwanda gets temporary relief against SEC. That's another one. Uh, we have medical council convict two doctors. Hmm, what could that be about? Medical test for fake custom DCG. <laughs> page 41 is where you find our story. Let's see what's on the back page. Olatunji Dare is here at home abroad. Uh, today he's talking back on the beat. What's that about? There's a picture of the late um, MKO Abiola on the back page. You might want to uh, take a quick look at that. Hatball is here. Mackenday's 100 days. Uh, that's some state uh, governor or your new governor is being, um, you know, assessed 100 days uh, in office. That's yet to happen, though. Okay. On the front page, over to you now. Which of these just <coughs> kind of... Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I'm not sure. This Abo pleads not guilty. Not guilty. I think that that will be um, going technical on, you know, the, the legal procedures for some of these things. Um, because by the time you read the count, um, the charges against him, um, it might be pleading not guilty on some of the charges, because most of the time when they sue people to court, it's usually not one count charges. Well, it's one count charge on this. Uh, For him? Yes. I'm not so entirely it, sure it's a one count charge. That's what, uh, that's what the news read, that a one count charge of assault has been preferred against him, and he has pleaded not guilty. On the one count charge? Yeah. I don't know what he's pleading not guilty to. <laughs> 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 to be very sincere, I've not read that news, but I don't know what he's pleading not guilty <laughs> because he was caught on camera, and he has come out you know, it, to yeah. apologize. But like I said, it's, usual, it's probably you know, a... Um, 
uh, is is legal technicality. And it's our not lawyers do, do have a it way be, exactly. to you know paint green, blue. I mean, they can do amazing, amazing in quotes jobs with these kind of uh, lawsuits. All right, uh, let's uh, see this one on. Elumelu, others, PDP Kakos wants leaders. Uh, they're basically telling them to rescind their decision on the suspension, on suspension of uh, those um, members of House of Preps. Uh, well, uh, I, I, party uh, party issues sometimes can be very funny. Um, I still I'm not entirely sure, you know, why the PDP um, leaders have suspended some members of the House. Again, it goes back to the issue of stakeholders, consultation and management. Have you suspended those people without, you know, properly carrying people along? And so this is why we're asking them to go because- Apparently they were invited for a meeting and they did not turn up for the meeting. Yes. So that, that, that's the story that's been circulated. I think it's more than media. that. We always, you can't be, I mean, you are not going to suspend someone for not coming <laughs> for a meeting. For a meeting. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the Vanguard newspaper now and hopefully um, wrap things up. Uh, the Vanguard has a screamer this morning, a presidential tussle. We sent poll results to INEX server. That's staff of um, INEX speaking. I signed result sheets under duress. That's witness. Why I dumped Buhari for Atiku by Buba Galadima. Uh, he seems to be the big witness that, uh, witness rather, that came out on this case. Uh, celebrating Oshoba at 80. All the papers are celebrating the man himself. All of them, there's uh, some story. Yesterday on him it's a big deal we say happy birthday to him again all right we also have this at the very top uh, british foreign commonwealth office condemns prosecution of christians in nigeria uh, details of that story is on page eight of the paper we also have principal officers pdp reps their party declare support for illumilu others hmm. I've not heard the last of that. Political gladiators turn up for Oshoba, preach tolerance. I'll fix refineries and fuel import by 2023. A new GMD speaking all tough there. Okowa at 60. You see story on page 12 of the paper. Uh, those are some of the stories uh, you will see. Uh, job losses. 10,733 affected workers get 4.5 billion naira part pension payment. Expansion fund hits 9 trillion naira. That's uh, something for you on the front page of the Vanguard. Of course, on the back, we have a bit of sports, so we'll highlight that in a second. But let's just hear uh, Tuboshin's uh, thoughts. Um, again, going back to this issue of INEX server. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on there, so maybe I should just quickly move on and uh, talk about the persecution of Christians in, in Nigeria. I'm usually a bit. Um, weary of um, conversations that tend to um, divide things across religious or ethnic or tribal lines. But well, we can do away with that. We, we can do away very, with it. a very strongly religious society yes, as it is. Yes, we are a very strongly, you know, religious, very, very strong religious society. However, I think that we have to look at the um, the nuances and the real, you know, conversation. In the first place, what are the things that we look out for when we want to? Um, so, if 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 you had an emergency, and um, and uh, you know your friend is taken to the hospital, the first thing you're checking is not if the doctor is a Muslim or a Christian. You want to get saved. So every time things like this come to the fore, you know, I I call to question, what is the objective of this conversation, and are we? Isolate. Are we? Are we? Are we making conclusions on isolated issues? You know, are we drawing conclusions from isolated issues? Because I'm asking, say that Christians in Nigeria are being prosecuted. If we're looking at this from the north, I think we should understand the cultural nuances of places. You know, uh, um, and, and also know that there's a peculiarity in that area. In Lagos, I don't think so. In the west, I don't think so. In the north, it, it, you you can almost a bit understand how you know the north. Operate, and we have to come to realize the situation of things there and move from where we are to where we want to be, and not from a. I'm, I'm not very comfortable with you with know, headlines with like that, that. that. But it, it will make sense though if we go read the entire you know, package and yeah, see I, I mean, uh, what if, premise they're coming from. If, if if it's just how certain things are not you know very welcome in those places like you know uh, prostitution, alcohol, they are not openly welcome, which is why they almost want to say, oh, there's an area for that. Even if they do it inside their 
you homes, know, homes. Yeah. yeah, but they're saying, oh, we, this area, don't do this here, you can go and do that here. You know, so I, I think that we need to contextualize, you know, the, um, the, uh, the nuances of, you know, um, and the cultural differences we have so that we don't make comments that are a bit insightful. I'm not very comfortable with that. Thank you very much, Tavasu. Right. I kid you, right? Yes. I remember. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, he's a reputation manager. Always a pleasure to have you Thank here you with us. Uh, we have some sports stories. I'd just like to highlight a few of them before we say bye-bye for this morning. Uh, Raul says, we're here to win. Nigeria manager boasts as Eagles hit Cairo for Bafana Bafana. Uh, we also have a Lodge at the Posh Meridian. Uh, yeah, they're being taken care of, basically. Mikel beating Cameroon well, has given us confidence. Super Eagles keeper insists ahead of quarterfinal fixture. Uh, we also have something on PSG confirmed Yerma is a wall after Barca target fails to show up for pre-season. Uh, those are some headlines you might want to read. Of course, there is Soccer Talk, Afghan Diary 6, uh, by columnist there. And on the back page of the Complete Sports is uh, Transfer Stories, loads of them, actually. Yama is a wall. That's uh, another one for you. I guess that's a wrap this morning on the newspaper headlines and off the press and Plus TV Africa. I want to thank you especially uh, for sharing your morning with us. Do go to your vendors and catch uh, some of these headlines and read in detail so you're better uh, grounded. Thank you very much for watching and to take care of yourself.